Monetary Policy Committee meeting since July 2023 and the first under the new Apex Bank governor, Yemi Kadosu. I hope that decisions of the MPC. The Monetary Committee meeting is coming at a time when inflation is at an all-time high of 29.9%, triggered by an increase in food prices and living conditions of most Nigerians. It is for this reason that the committee raised the monetary policy rate. The committee decided to further tighten monetary policy as follows. One, raise the MPR by 400 basis points to 22.75 from 18.75%. Some reasons were attributed to the rising rate of inflation by the committee. This includes insecurity and poor infrastructure. Considering the option of a hold policy, the evidence revealed that previous policy rate hikes have slowed the rise in inflationary pressure, but not to a desirable extent. Members considered various scenarios of hold and hike and concluded that inflation could become more persistent in the medium term and thus pose more regulatory challenges, if not effectively anchored. The Apex Bank boss then gives an account of how a total of 10 trillion naira, this boss for various interventions over six years, <coughs> failed to yield the desired results. The interventions that took place in the recent past were estimated in excess of 10 trillion naira. I'm not talking about ways and means, I'm talking about the interventions that you just asked about over 10 trillion naira. What was the budget of the federal government of Nigeria? What was the budget of the largest state in Nigeria? Do the math and it will tell you the extent of damage. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Apex Bank promises to continue to keep an eye on both the monetary and fiscal authorities to ensure that the nation's economy is restored to the path of growth while projecting an economic growth rate of 3.3% for the year 2024. From the headquarters of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Sarah Chimugu, Channel Television News. Well, Mr. Marcel Okeke joins us now. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. Well, you have been a former chief, uh, let me look at that again, chief economist of Zeni Bank. So you, in fact, listening to the CBN governor say all of those that he said and more, because he said much more than we did play, of course, uh, time factor. Can the banks actually feign ignorance or excuse themselves from the challenge that we face economically now, I mean, haven't been there. You know how this works. Well, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for having me today, and uh, thank you for this question. Uh, when you said the banks, you mean uh, the commercial banks yeah. that have been operating in Nigeria, whether they are not part of parcel of the problem or the challenges we have now. Mm -hmm. I want to make this point that the banks are first and foremost, you know, business organizations. Okay? And so, at every point in time, they are looking out for opportunities. You know, they are exploring and exploiting opportunities within their environment. They also serve as channels uh, for what is called transmission mechanism. That means when the government puts out some policies, the banks serve as channels to get those policies, you know, implemented and felt in the economy. And um, uh, because they are regulated, you know, all this time, you know, rather than blaming the one that's regulated, 
I will think that is the regulator that has not been, you know, doing what they ought to do. You know, if the bank had, I mean, had, had in any way, you know, not done what they ought to do. But I doubt that seriously. So the banks, as far as I'm concerned, we are doing their businesses and continue to do their businesses within the confines of the law. Okay? Is round tripping uh, one of those opportunities? Unless you are the one establishing that banks, when you say banks, are doing round tripping, you could you could have some judases. Judas is chaos within the system. There's no system that does not have the somebody eggs. It could be the same thing in banks. As a matter of fact, in the banking system, it's not everybody that has access uh, to foreign exchange. So it's some people. And where you have these some people, you see have a fewer number of people who have access to foreign exchange who you could be accusing, you know, the way you are saying. So you cannot now label every all the whole system that's the banks and so, everybody that works at the entire system as corporates in this. So in this does area. that then imply that you saying, well, banks may you know have some sort of blame, but if the regulator had regulated properly, the banks might not have dipped their hands in the cookie jar. I can say that. I'm also telling you that there is all, there's what is called insider abuse. You understand? In every system, an insider who is directly involved, you know, in trying to perform a function, but because it's an insider, the kind of information he has, and he takes advantage of that. That is what happens in some of the banks. I don't even say all of them. And it happens to some degrees, in, in, I mean, varied degrees in the banks. And so to make a sweeping statement to say all the banks you know, are to blame, or everybody in the banks, I mean, are to blame. I, 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 I would not take all that. Yes, that but, you know, the, the questions are important because, you know, people have always raised concerns as to how it is the banks always declare this wonderful profits after tax in a way that doesn't quite reflect the buoyancy of the economy. People would think that when banks are making so much profit, it will mean that many other sectors within Nigeria are also doing quite well, but oftentimes that isn't the case. I mean, how do we explain this uh, phenomenon? Again, I want to thank you for this question. I said banks are business organizations that look out for opportunities. Uh, the, the problems you're talking about are a function of so many things. Okay? In the recent past, where you have, you know, hundreds of uh, hundreds of uh, percentage increase in profit, after tax, before tax, and all that, and all that. You know, the, 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 ex the exploited, if I can use that word, or they, they looked out for and saw the opportunity, you know, thrown open to them by the, 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 the policies coming from the monetary authorities. Okay? And that was when uh, the CBN floated, floated uh, uh, the Naira. The you era. know, uh, floated the Naira. Yes, Naira flotation in uh, in June last year, okay. for instance. So some of the banks, I must tell you, we are not as positively affected as the others. You know, so it is those who have who have assets that are denominated denominated in dollars. You know, that are making the kind of profit you are talking about. There are some of them that incurred huge losses because they they, they have their debts. You know, also denominated in dollars. So again, like I said, they're in business, okay, and they have to they have to present their reports in line with the dictates of the the, the the agency that is supervising them, that is regulating them, and that's how come they are reporting those and they are compelled by law to report those things. Mm -hmm. So that's why they reported according to you know their their their, their responses to, to to the policies coming from from the regulatory authority, that's the central bank of Nigeria at that point in time. As we are speaking. The central bank of uh, in Nigeria, the central bank of Nigeria, has recently even altered, you know, that complete flotation, and done a lot of things to try to reverse, you know, you know what what the cause have been issue. So you can now see that yes, the banks will make profit, but may not be as much as they did in the year ending December 2023. You know, again, it is in response to the policies coming from the central bank of Nigeria at every point in time. That's how, that's how it works. Well, the CBN governor in this uh, first uh, MPC meeting in over eight months um, has emphasized the fact that they're going to be entering the era of 
regulation, regulation, regulation. Those were his words. I do not know if you were able to watch the entirety of the entire briefing past, uh, you know, when he gave what the outcome of the meeting was to when he started taking questions from journalists. Um, as somebody who has watched The Economy, what was your take from the outcome of the MPC and the question and answer session which the CBN governor undertook? Uh, again, thank you very much. The outcome or the impact that those decisions are going to have on the economy is going to be mixed. At best, it's going to be mixed, the impact. But let me tell you, for example, the Central Bank of Nigeria governor, for instance, was reporting to the whole world for the first time that a company called Binance Nigeria, you know, had transaction to the tune of 26 billion dollars that passed through it. And that as he was speaking, that they were unable to even identify the people who were involved in this transaction. Who now do you blame? That goes to show that it's not even the banks, you know, that are being blamed for this, that are responsible. Who has been heard about Binance before the CBN governor mentioned Binance? That is one question. And that is one challenge. The other one is that raising uh, MPR by 400 basis uh, points, okay, uh, looks like a panic, okay? Um, for the very first time in living memory, I, don't, I have not had the Central Bank of Nigeria raising MPR by 400 basis points. So it's a kind of panic, you understand? And when you do that, it's only signaling to the banks, we are not talking about to the banks, that, that they can now hike their own lending rates to whatever level, maybe to 35, maybe to 40, and so on and so forth. And which businesses can thrive with that level of interest rate in Nigeria of today, okay? And if any company even borrows at that rate and factors it into the cost of production, that in turn goes to push up in, uh, inflation because they will factor that and we bring it as price to the consumer of whatever they are producing. So the inflation they are trying to fight will now be indirectly pushed up again. Okay? Yeah. The same central bank, the same central bank in recent weeks has been raising the duties rate charged by Nigerian customs every day. They raise it. Every day. They raise it. What is that telling us? It is all panic. You understand? And that is sending some signal because people who are who are importing that the customs people are charging this is based on that rate. They will factor it into whatever they are bringing in to sell to you and I. And that will continue to push up inflation. You yeah. understand? Yeah. And, and that kind of instability, every day the rate is changed, every day the rate is changed, that kind of instability does not give confidence to any business person. As a matter of fact, Nigerians who are regular importers are now scared and moving to a neighboring country's maritime facilities instead of importing through Nigeria. Some of them have gone into uh, smuggling rather than going through the official channels where there is so much demorage, where the, 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 the exchange rate has gone haywire, oh. and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, I wanted to quickly ask you, uh, Mr. OKK, I, uh, let's say Dr. OKK, um, on some of this, because people will ask, what options really did the CBN have? I mean, you heard right now we're talking about ways and means that we're up to 30 trillion naira. Uh, we're also looking at another 10 trillion naira intervention. You heard the CBN governor say, this is not even uh, taking into account ways and means. So um, I, I think we've heard another economist talk about how, you know, we've, we've not really entered hyperinflation. We're, we're still dealing with galloping inflation. Uh, so really, what instruments were available to the CBN, looking at how much money it currently had in the system, factoring in the fact that we haven't had so many MPC meetings or we've skipped so many since July last year, um, and where we currently are at, did, did they really have a number of um, uh, instruments at their disposal uh, other than what they have done? Thank you. You know, yes, they have these instruments, but how these instruments are used is the issue. Let me tell you, the CBN should put, in, should put on its thinking cap properly and now look into the system to know who is playing what role. The blanket blame for the banks is part of the, is part of the problem. 
like I said earlier on, if there uh, is an organization like Binance are discovered, we're talking about Binance, I'm talking about 23 uh, million billion alone. Then you can imagine the other his other colleagues, you know, the, uh, his a cohort in the system. You can imagine when they are also discovered and the amount that have been going through them. So if the central bank has to carefully, you know, spread its dragnet and comb and find out these ones in the system and then deal with them. It is like this issue of uh, swift fuel subsidy withdrawal. If the government has isolated people who were involved in that uh, fuel subsidy uh, uh, haha or even fuel subsidy problem, isolated those people and dealt with them, we won't be going through what we are going through today. So in the same way, the Central Bank of Nigeria should speak very well, collaborating with the EFCC and NFIU, you know, and such related agents, DSS, and Nigeria Security uh, Organization, or NSA, Office of the uh, Chief Security Advisor. Come back to these people from the system and deal with them until we begin to normalize. The issue of announcing 400 basis points jump in NPR is too much. It has not happened before. The issue of uh, CRR of 45% is alarming and is counterproductive because the productive sector, the manufacturing people, are being punished for the sin of other people. No serious business, no proper business, no right business, no correct business. We thrive in this atmosphere of uh, of uh, NPR at 22.75. Okay? Rather, it is those false and crooked businesses that will be thriving. And many of them will be go, go doing it on the ground. So the Central Bank of Nigeria has to go beyond the surface and discover these agents of the devil and deal with them. And our economy will start coming back. That's the way I put it. Well, you know, uh, um, Dr. KK, it's um, interesting, you know, the conversation that you had with my colleagues so far. But I recall something you said about the banks earlier, uh, saying that they are just in business to make money. Uh, when you were speaking with Chamberlain earlier. Uh, let's go back to something that happened six years ago when a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly made a comment, and he was saying it in a public, uh, at a public event, says, nobody, no political office holder, no civil servant, no public servant can actually dip his hands in the till without the funds going through the banking system. It is about transfers, it's about authorization, it's about the bank helping them to hide the funds. Is it also part of banks doing business? Thank you for the question. I now have to clarify what I said. I said that I want to repeat that in every, in every 12 apostles, you must have a Judas Iscariot. I am saying that it is some you know, bad eggs in the system that collaborate and collude, you know, with the kind of politicians you're talking about. So we cannot make a blanket statement that say the banks. We cannot even make a blanket statement that say all the any person that works and any and everybody that works in the bank. You understand? There must be more than so, just uh, one Judas Iscariot. So they, just a second, just a second, if you can hear me, just one second. There must be more than one Judas Iscariot because we are not talking about just one or two occasions. It's almost like the the normal thing is an exception. And that's what has happened so far. There are those who are pointing that if you would really want to deal with corruption in Nigeria, you need to go through the banking system. The areas of collusion are so strong and prevalent. And they are almost like nothing can be done about them. A lot of talk has, been, has gone around about the banks helping you know, fire money speculators to cause the crisis crisis that the Nigerian Nara is going through. Many people will go to the banks to get cash. They can't get cash, but they can get mint cash at parties, at events. Many people look for dollars in the banks. They can't get them, but they will get them with the BDCs. So exactly how are the banks generally not in collusion in this particular matter? How do we exempt them? Or maybe you want to put it better, clean up the system so that these things don't, don't become normal. Again, I want to thank you. You have said it. Uh, if the banks have been doing what you said over the years, it means that the supervisor, the regulator, has not been doing his job properly. Because the truth is that the banks have format for reporting suspicious transactions. And I know, to the best of my knowledge, they diligently do that. 
You understand? They interact with with the EFCC, NFIU. You understand? And the real supervisory uh, 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 units in the Central Bank of Nigeria. So if these things are there in place, how come the banks we are accusing of all this is always escape or have been escaping? You know, the, this is of the law. You understand? So when the current central bank governor says they are not going to do regulation, regulation, supervision, and all that, he knows what he's saying. What he's saying, in effect, is that in recent part, there have been lapses. There have been collusion. There have been lapses. Lapses. You understand? So that's what he's now saying. And that's why we look forward to having a better system. You understand? And that's why we look forward to having, you know, a better banking system. A banking system that, you know, fills the purpose for which it exists. And not, you know, being, being, being a channel for, uh, you know, moving around the illegal uh, uh, funds or something like that. Mm. So uh, I, I want to agree with the CBN governor on what he's saying. We are only watching out to see how he goes on, you know, carrying out his intentions and his plan to see but, that we have a better bank banking industry. It that might also be it might also be helpful, Dr. KK, to have a situation yes. where it's not just the CBN that is doing this work. There are other interested parties such as yourself as well. Now, there are those who might also ask, hey, isn't there a job for the regulators of the practice, of the banking practice itself? The banks is one, but they have operators within uh, each of those banks to, that, that do these things. So do you see a role for the Chartered Institute of Bankers in this particular fight that the CBN is embarking on? I, I may not be speaking fully on behalf of the CIBN, but to a large extent, I am an insider in Center, uh, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, they are doing a lot, you know, both in collaboration with the uh, CB, CBN, in collaboration with the EFCC, you understand, in collaboration with NFI, NFIU, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance, and so on and so forth, through their trainings through their emphasis on ethics and professionalism. Emphasis on ethics and professionalism. The Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria has over the years been doing everything possible to make sure that every banker, especially chartered banker, you understand, operates ethically and there is morality in banking and there is trust in banking. You understand? So, and it is still doing that. If I must tell you, a few days ago, you know, the leadership of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria had a serious behind the door meeting with the leadership of TFCC, you know, with a view to spotting these bad eggs we are talking about and dealing with them. Okay, I don't want to hear that now, now that we are on air, start, you know, start reeling out, you know, the activities and the program with a view to getting this. But I am telling you that a lot is going on behind the scenes. Those things are not publicized, but they know that there are bad eggs in the system. They are also trying to come up with some amendments, you know, to their uh, enabling act, you know, that will empower them to be able to deal, you know, with such individuals when discovered in the system. So a lot is going on, and we look forward to, you know, a better banking uh, uh, system going forward. Now that we have uh, Cardoso and his team, who are also, uh, um, you know, prepared to do a lot of supervision and uh, regulation. That's the way it goes. Uh, with this, I mean, with the NFIU report so identifying some of these platforms for terrorism, financing, and criminal activities, we understand that there'll be more arrests, so people can look for, he expects some scenarios in that regard. Yes, we've had several oh, yeah, other yeah. recommendations about what to do to fix the economy and perhaps rein in and arrest this uh, sliding of the weakening of the Naira against the dollar. Are we on the right path with some of the decisions, measures being adopted by the CBN? What will yours be if you don't think we are? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know. Some of the times, some people or institutions or agencies will have good intentions. But the way they go about doing it, you know, we end up not achieving the intended objective. For example, whoever thought that Naira flotation will bring Naira to the sorry state it is in today? Okay? Whoever thought that fuel subsidy withdrawal will, will have the kind of impact it's having on the economy today? Such that for nine months now, 
what the current administration has been doing principally uh, is running the economy on palliatives. Palliatives. So uh, the, the, the government has brought in market forces into the management of the foreign exchange market. Okay, that means demand and supply. So on the part of government, the Central Bank of Nigeria, they should do everything to raise the supply of dollar into the market. Because the situation we have now is that the demand overwhelmingly All right, I think we, we uh, lost that connection for a moment. But we did get the crux of uh, his submissions, Chief Master Lukege, former Chief Economist of Zeni Bank. Uh, uh, well, apologies there for losing that connection. But um, we'll have to anchor incidentally at this point, but not without highlighting a message or two from uh, our viewers who are watching. So let's see, we've got uh, Dorothy, look at you, your mail, talking yeah. about the petroleum product distribution. Go ahead. Indeed, she says, um, Ipman is a mammoth organization made up of <laughs> owners of single and some multiple retail outlets. In the immediate past, they depended solely on allocation of subsidized products from NNPC. The removal of subsidy from PMS, which is their main sale product, has only exposed the weakness of their business model. If NNPC imports PMS without subsidy, it can only supply the product to marketers who are ready to pay the economic rate, which will be profitable to all sides. If IPMAN members are not satisfied with the conditions stipulated by NNPC for the purchase of products from their depots, IPMAN should pursue other means of getting their supplies. The major marketers are not facing the same problem that IPMAN is complaining about. IPMAN members should therefore review their business models to fall in line with current realities of no subsidy regime. Oh, many questions on that particular mail. Yeah. And sadly, we couldn't really speak with uh, Mr. Gillis Harry for a little longer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this would have also come up in a discussion. Yeah, we'll pick up on that tomorrow and see what more we can get. But Dixon also talks about the probe of the power sector by the House of Representatives. He says it's a good development. We've not had it so bad since the minister came into power. It's been one outage or the other. So he thinks they can do a lot better. And I reckon many will feel the same. Well, that is the show this morning. We do thank you all for watching. We'll see you again here tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Assault. Goodbye. Thank you for sticking with us today. We wish you a very productive Thursday. I'm Mark Welgo, Yusuf. And I'm Ayo Makine. Do have a wonderful day.